everybody. Hey, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas, and you tuned in just in time to see me make a mistake. Luckily, um, we won't have to pay for that mistake. The cut did. Uh, the cut took. So, uh, yep, the cut took just fine. So anyway. This is part two of finishing the wall in the uh, in in what we call our guest bedroom. Uh, this is probably to me the most exciting part of it, and that is setting the window in place. And I'm going to show you the windows and what they have to do, and um, you can watch me cut them. Let's get started. So this is what the windows are going to look like in place. Um, I've got them set in the slot that I showed you. And what I have to do here is I have to cut a slot in this little piece here on either side, three quarters of an inch to accept the um, uh, the slot, which you can't see because of the, I didn't unpack the windows yet, but uh, to accept that slot. Then this will go up here like so and be flush on the inside. So from the inside, you'll see the window, the window, and then this piece of limestone with the natural finish on it. I've got to take and chip this edge off uh, to make it look nice and I have to cut the uh, slot and I believe we'll do that next. Well here's a look at the uh, window sill on the inside of the um, of the bedroom. Uh, this sill is 50, uh, 53 and a half inches wide, excuse me, long and it's uh, it's only 26 wide that was what um, actually no it's 19 5 wide excuse me that's just what these slabs were now uh, those slabs as I said they come from uh, the looters quarry uh, in looters Texas which is north of uh, Amarillo and they were looter stone was all the rage a while ago f with uh, people building McMansions so uh, I got these not because I like to keep up with all those people but I got these because I got them real cheap uh, I paid by the ton instead of by the slab now it's an eight-step process to polish these down they came with little um, uh, the saw marks in them the saw marks were up to Oh, somewhere between a 16th and a 64th gouges in here, and it was just like striations like so. And they had to be ground out. So I've got a, uh, an eight-step um, an eight-step polishing process. It begins with a 50-grit diamond-encrusted um, uh, wet blade, or a uh, wet pad, I guess you'd call it. And it just doubles from there. So it starts 50, 100, 200, 400, all the way up to 6,000. So this is finished with a 6,000. It's got a satin finish, but for some reason it's not shining, and I think it's the weather here. But at any rate, this is it. I had to get help. I weighed about, my guess is about 250 pounds. I, I always say 300, but about 250. I had to get help to bring it up here and set it in place. We set it in place. It is level with, it's virtually level with a very slight tip backwards towards the rear. In case water falls on the outside of the window here, it won't pool, it'll fall right off. And it's perfectly level this way. Now, these windows are made just like most windows to be mounted. To be mounted to the outside of the uh, of the the structure. In other words, you screw them into place and then cover that with molding. Well, the flange that goes all the way around. It's a, a three quarter inch flange. I took that, that where that flange is, and I'm cutting a groove in the sill and on the uh, casement, uh, casement, 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 and the lintel that'll go above. Now the lintel that'll go above is going to be just a touch bigger than this. So um, it's going to be a bitch to get that thing up there nine feet in the air. But at any rate, we'll cross that bridge later. Uh, so now you know how it goes into, uh, goes together. And it's just going to be a matter of slide, sliding the window uh, into the slots. And uh, once the slots are in place, the lintel goes on top and the lintel seals it all in. Now someone is going to ask me, well, what happens if the window fails? Well, if the window fails, you're going to have to break all this away and pull the window out. Uh, this is a gamble that I took, uh, an intelligent gamble. None of us want to talk about dying, but the fact of the matter is I'm 63 years old. Uh, if the windows last me 20 years, that's 83. 
I plan on living a lot longer than that. However, there's always that but. So uh, this to me was a better way to put the windows in. So let's go and work on the, um, on the casements. Now I'm not an expert on how they cut these slabs at the uh, looter's quarry. I know they have a gigantic big diamond blade and that leaves the, in fact, the striations are very, very obvious on this piece here that I'm cutting from. But I do know that they leave these lips on the natural uh, pieces. I've got a lip on both sides. That lip has got to be uh, cut off so that my measurements are accurate. So what I'm going to do now is remove the lip. And I said cut off, but it has to be chiseled off. And I just use my, uh, my two inch chisel and I don't think I can do it without weighting it down. So let me get a piece to weight it down. All right, that's a piece of scrap. And all I'm going to do is take my chisel with the rock hammer. The rock hammer is lighter. I don't want a big heavy touch with my other two hammers. So I just take the two, in, uh, the two inch chisel, put it flush, put it right up against that edge and right up against the flat part and just give it a knock. And it's a lot like firing a gun. You anticipate that it's going to give, so you start moving, and that's when you that's when you hit your hand. And boy, if you've ever hit your hand with one of these, it hurts. So you just um, what I do is just keep moving. Probably going to be a little easier to see what I'm doing from here. There. Which is not so easy for me because I lost my seat. And any of you that have studied rock work or are masons, the key to working with rock is patience. It's just patience. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't, don't start getting all, um, uh, all bent out of shape. Oh, I gotta hurry. I gotta hurry. Uh, if you find yourself getting impatient, stop. Go do something else. Come back to it another time. Let's turn it over. Now the same thing on this edge here. I've got to chisel that off, but I myself surprisingly made a mistake. Hmm. And I've got a little bit too much edge here, and this edge I believe I'm going to take the saw to because I'm afraid of actually breaking the um, breaking the, this little tiny piece. This piece is only a four inch piece, and this is limestone, but any rock can be quite brittle. Limestone, um, limestone. Again, this could be any rock, but limestone seems to, uh, because it's, it's soft by nature, limestone seems to be very, very prone to breaking where you don't want it to break when you don't want it to. See, I'm going to go ahead and grind that piece right there off. I don't want to take a chance hitting it. Another thing about at least this limestone that we're working with right here, uh, over some of the others that I bought from looters. This particular piece, uh, the, um, in fact, these all came from the same slab, so I'm assuming this whole slab, it's just loaded with flaws. And if you're not careful, those flaws will crack. And you have to watch, like if you're chiseling like this and a piece comes off where you didn't want it to and you know you hit it right, you have to stop. You don't want to go any any further. You're done. Because if you do, it will um, definitely, definitely um, crack on you. Now here's a little trick. Again, you stonemasons know it, but those of us that aren't stonemasons, we don't know this trick. If you still don't have the edge exactly perfect, just take that chisel and slide it right down. You can take it down flat like this, or you can angle it a little bit. I'm angling it a little right at the moment. 
It's kind of a kind of a bullnose effect. Now we're gonna bullnose it a little bit when we polish it. And that will be that'll be after we get all the casements. Huh? Don't, and I can't wear gloves while I'm doing this, so you gotta be careful that you don't cut your fingers. All right, the only thing left to do is to cut this little piece right here off. And that you do with the saw. I'll put it right here where you can see me. Open the saw up and put the blade right tight against it. What I have is I needed four inches to make the casement flush with the windows. Now I allowed, I, I'm pretty sure I allowed four inches. Let's see what we got here. We have to the outermost part of this rough edge, the natural edge, we have from, um, let's see, from a high of four and an eighth to a low of 3 and 15 sixteenths. That's pretty good. That is, that is close enough for, for a natural stone. Now the next step is going to be, and I can leave it right here while I do this, the next step is going to be, I have to measure in here 3, uh, 1 inch, excuse me, I have to measure in here 1 inch on each side, make my line and make my cut. The cut that I make is three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to go a sixteenth over three quarters. So what's that? Thirteen sixteenths each cut is going to be thirteen sixteenths. Now that's going to leave me um, a six sixteenths or a three eighths only, holding this together here. That's okay. You don't need the strength here. You need the upright strength here because the lintel is going to push its weight down on this and when I put the window in I also have a trick going above it that's going to lighten up the weight on top of it so um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off camera and show you the finished product well here's the dry fit on the windows the um, thing I was working on uh, that was probably the most delicate part was that center little piece of um, of limestone and let's get close to it now you'll notice there's a small gap there. There won't be when I fit it, but it just it, it has to be knocked in a little tighter and really that piece is rather fragile. So I'm only going to knock it in one time, uh, but I know it fits because I tried it uh, when it was laying flat. Also the windows are standing just a touch proud of this. Um, which really, I don't think, makes it look bad. I think that's kind of a neat little look to it. Um, now, some people are going to ask, why am I using two windows instead of one? Well, the, I've said it before in other videos, and this is something for you to remember if you're trying to build with recycled or repurposed materials. The plans are always dynamic. Now, let me turn this around and... Blech. What I mean, here we go. Hello, everybody. What I mean by the plans are dynamic is they're always subject to change based on what you can get a deal on or what's recyclable or repurposable. In my case, the builder supply near me, uh, which is McCoy's, uh, it's a small chain here in Texas, uh, they had these three windows that were custom ordered. They were a part of a, you know, custom custom order for somebody's house. Anyway, the order went south on them. I got these three windows and I got a, a, a six foot uh, French door. Uh, very inexpensively. I got it for like 40% uh, of what retail would have been. So um, for me, it was no big deal to put the um, to, to, to put that center support in. In fact, that center support actually makes the lintel a bit stronger, and we'll get into that a little later. But anyway, that's why there's two windows. Okay, I'm going to cut the rest and have my casement all set. We'll be ready for the lintel. Well, the casement is done. The window is in and dry fitted. It still has to be all taken apart. I have to polish this side and this side. So the two casement sides have to be polished. This little brace in the center, of course, doesn't. This is already done. So I have to polish these two. 
Then I have to um, cut and get ready to fit the um, lintel uh, and polish the lintel. And all we do is just put it together. You just put the whole thing together. It doesn't need any adhesive or anything because the weight of the um, of all the stones will hold the window in place and the window will the windows will float just a little bit. If I find I need a little bit of adhesive, I'll just caulk the outer edge there. Uh, so um, it's set and ready for right now. Um, and the next thing I'll do is show you um, uh, I'll show you the uh, polishing process and that will be in the separate video. This is just um, this is the one about getting the casement set and there she sits. Of course everything's dirty but um, that's kind of sort of what every window in the place is going to look like. It's going to have at least this kind of depth. So I'll end it here and part three is coming up in a day or two and until then this is Robert Earl in the guest room here at the Eco Ranch saying bye for now.